good morning from my Rosewater Cottage studio. I'm here with my coffee, my second cup, because I, I don't know about y'all, but I, with the change in weather, it's so cold outside and there's icicles dripping everywhere and everything's going on here. <laughs> so I've had a scratchy throat and a little sniffly sniff. But I wanted to share with you um, some things. And first of all, if you are seeing this on YouTube, if I reference IGTV or Instagram or my stories, I'm sharing it to both. If you're on Instagram, there's some people who aren't on Instagram that are on YouTube. So I try to pop this uh, and I hope I will watch the time and make sure we can get it on both. But there's a lot to share with you. And so I put everything on my table. So if I looked around, I wouldn't forget something. <laughs> So I get to, I get a little excited and I get to talking fast. And so I'm going to try to slow down and share some things with you. The first thing being so many of you have left the sweetest comments and you've sent messages and you've asked questions about this blanket and what was the pattern and what was all that. So first of all, I looked back, I scrolled back through, I was inspired by this handmade life, Olivia had posted back in March when we first, when the pandemic hit and we were all home and I was scrolling through just endlessly looking for inspiration and her blanket, her granny stripe was inspiration. So then I Googled and I found Attic 24 and I found her granny stripe blanket pattern. So this is a, a modified version. Hers had, it. I think it had been a kid and you got so many um, certain shades and colors. Well, I just looked at my stash of yarns and then I ordered, I found um, another company in Canada, new, I think New Brunswick is where they're out of, um, for yarn. So I ordered because you couldn't go to a yarn shop, you couldn't go anywhere. So I began ordering. Well, it was taking so long, you know, to ship from Canada, which I understood, but it was, so when I found the knit shop here in our little county, I was over the moon because, you know, me and my right now itis, and I want to make it right now. And so I'm already having to be patient and wait for Liberty of London fabrics to come from the Strawberry Thief in Australia. So I'm finding things to do in the meantime. Okay, so that's the inspiration, the pattern, the colors. I have to tell you why these colors speak to me when I say they're variegated and they're different, um, like this is 100 acre wood, and it's all those shades in there. Let me just explain to you what it does. When I'm illustrating my little stories, my books, um, my, my paint palette, my tin of watercolors, do you see how they blend? And when I first started, when I jumped in at 50 and began writing, my books and had to learn how to draw and paint really paint with watercolors. I'd never used those. It was hard and it was learning. But when I, as I started learning how the watercolors moved and how they worked, it was fascinating to me. And that's why when I found, I have to show you in my, my little tin for mousy making. I hope y'all are along for the ride and hanging on. Strap in because I'm going to get a lot in there fast. I found these hand dyed silk ribbons back in 2010 before I learned to knit so that when I knit that little tiny shawl for Eliza the Mouse, there's her first tiny little shawl and I had to add ribbons. I had a stash of hand dyed Gloriana ribbons. This was the hydrangea blue. hand dyed silk ribbon to make the little ties so that the little shawls would stay around this little plump mousy. Okay, so there's the, the hand dyed, the, when I found these yarns that are hand dyed, oh, they're beautiful. And I look at the, okay, so I'll show you just some of the illustrations I'm working on. If you saw really old bear in the little intro she wanted to come up here with me because she has a blanket all her own a granny stripe but when I was painting her and found out 
the colors to use to put what it was a blending of a of a green and a browns and it kind of turned into a sagey green and so when i experiment with the watercolors to make my illustrations here's another one where you can see her when she was waiting on her dress to be laundered that's that's how much i love these to see these yarns and all their varying shades. And when I wash, when I wash them, this is not a commercial for this, but, but this lavender wash, I've had people say, what, a lab, what is a lavender wash? This, oh, well, I call it that. It's just what you wash your, when you've made up your project and it, you don't have to squeeze and rinse it out if it doesn't all come out. That's the brand I use and it has this lavender I use it to wash my face masks that I wear um, to school, my Liberty of London fabric ones. I, and then I just smell that all day and it's comfort. <laughs> so that's just a little snip for that. Um, hold on. Mm. We've got another ice day, snow day today. So, and then we'll have Monday off for President's Day. So I'm hoping I'm over all of this before I have to head back in and do those Zoom classes. Okay, so let me start with, you've asked about the yarns, what I've used. The yarns that I got last weekend at the yarn shop, this is Prickly Pear. Oh goodness, I didn't pull out. I'll pull out the labels just a second. Sweetheart, but these are all from you and company, E-W-E, -E, that clever? You and Company in Kingston Springs, Tennessee. This is Lay a Rose. It's the Smushy Cashmere. And it is, can I just tell you, I was stitching with that last night, crocheting, and it was heaven to, to crochet with. 100 Acre Wood. Those are the four, I believe that's the four that I got there. This from um, from Lichen and Lace is the company that that I started with with these all these colors that came from Canada. Lichen and Lace is the is the independent um, yarn company hand dyeing their their yarns. This is Baby Eggplant. Look at that, <laughs> just so fun. This is called Baby Leaves. Remember, I couldn't decide, I couldn't remember if it was Baby Greens or it's Baby Leaves. So you think about it, in the spring, I just love my garden too. So these had a lot to do picking these colors. Pressed, pressed flowers. Now this one I love because I think about the pages of homemade, you know, homemade paper in a journal. And some of you see where they've included the little violets or the delphinium. That, just, I love that. So as I'm crocheting with that, pressed flowers and the way the yarn goes from the different colors. This one is called Faded Rose, which of course I love because Rosewater Cottage. This one is Beach Glass. Reminds me of our trip to Martha's Vineyard and collect, you know, trying to find beach glass. So I, this is why I put these, the last little ball of, of um, yarn I attach to the card so I can remember. Because I'm not, my, rem my rememberer is not remembering as well as it used to. This is Sugar Plum. And this is also from Lichen Lace. It's a different weight. So when I um, crocheted it in, oh, here, here it is. It had a little different look to it but it was it was all right it, it blended in if you get way off on your weights it's going to make your blanket all wonky if you stay within a close range of the weights you're okay you can throw in something a little different this one i debated i was going to do this around the edge it's called black walnut and we had a black walnut tree at our little rosewater cottage in franklin this is our Rosewater Cottage in Pleasant View. So it reminds me of that. So things, I'm all about the stories and what helps me remember things and, and especially as I'm crocheting and it's my time, it's my mindful stitching. And this pattern, what is so great about it is that it doesn't require, it's not taxing on your brain. I There was a time when I, I had time to go to a knit shop 
and learn patterns and stretch my brain learning new things, um, I still want to learn to knit sock. I want to learn to knit socks. And, and Jules, so sweet Violet, someday I might just show up on your doorstep and you have to show me how to knit socks. That's on my list. But for now, I come home after having to have learned all this new technology and these different platforms and Zoom and sharing screens and can I just tell you, I need something mindless and soothing and comfort. And I think that's what y'all are relating to is through all these crazy days, this chaos, what is comfort? Okay, I'm looking at the time. I'm going to scoot along. Um, so I guess, you know, if you don't catch all the colors, you're seeing the shades. What I do is I, on this pattern, I have, when I said I do two rows and then three rows, I don't know what I was saying. I do three shades, three specific shades, and then two rows of the, this is natural, it's called natural, from lichen and lace. And that just breaks it up. And then I can think, oh, what do I want to do next? Well, when I was just limiting my stash to these, to those few shades, it got kind of mundane to me and I wanted to switch it up a little bit and I hope I know it's probably gonna be not this is gonna be my figuring it out blanket for myself so I started with all these shades and then I started you can see where I started switching it up and adding in that right because I one blanket that I made I added in a stripe of red and it was really branching out for me. Those of you who have followed along, you see my 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 um, palette is very soft pinks and softer pinks and darker pinks and sh soft greens and so this is really branching out for me. But I'm I'm loving it and I'm loving just kind of a, a breaking out. Now when I made where is the little bear? Where is your blanket? Am I sitting on it? I don't know. Oh, goodness. Great. Oh, it's right here on the table. Let me put my yarns in the basket, and I will show you her blanket. And I, I have a little bed for her downstairs. So if you, you, she has her own hashtag. Hashtag really old bear. That's her name. She is now a registered trademark storybook character. She's the matriarch of, of our house, of our world. I am I am building her a, a selection of blankets and quilts and the hexi quilt is going to be darling. This will be her blanket, her quilt with the hexies. Now I'd already made her one with gingham and little calicos and that's sweet and that's folded up on her little trunk. Um, but I'm going to have to adapt her blanket because it's still those same shades and it's not quite finished so I could incorporate that that rose because I want it to go in with these kind of this raspberry red these shades and and add some sweetheart pink and maybe maybe I don't know these are kind of sagey greens so they lichen my very favorite color in the whole world I think is lichen green so that goes with that cabbages and roses green. So I have a lot going on. Let me see. Oh, and, and if I just want to show you this. So this is what started it all, was knitting tiny shawls. I knit this one, and then I thought, how small could I go? Could I actually knit one for her? And that's the very first shawl that I knit for Eliza. She's... um. She's been inspiration, and I'm working on a little tiny hexi for her, hexi quilt to go in her little basket. I'm running out of time. I've got to go. I love you. I'll see you soon.